Welcome to Socratic Studios. On this podcast, you can enjoy deep discussions and interviews about everything science related with the best minds in the field. I'm Vishnu, and today's episode will be about how plants of different species can exchange their organelles. With me today, I have Dr. Alexander Hurdle from the Max Planck Institute of the Study of Molecular Plant Physiology. Welcome, Dr. Hurdle. It's an honor to have you on the podcast. Um, before we dive into the specifics of your research, I wanted to ask a few background questions for the audience. So first, what is a grafted plant in the first place? So a um, grafted plant is a plant that uh, comes from, um, let's say, two parent organisms. So two plants or parts of the plants can, put, can be put together. So they will in the case of the plant, grow together and continue their life as an individual organism. So, uh, Next, my next background question was, what is horizontal gene transfer? Horizontal gene transfer is the exchange of genetic material between species, organisms and organelles, but not due to sexual reproduction and also not like the parents to the offspring. So my last uh, background question is, um, the chloroplast of, of, of a plant cell um, carries its own genetic material. Can you explain why this is? So the, uh, the, the genome of organelles um, is the remnant of the, um, so let's, let's put it different. So chloroplasts descend from an endosymbiotic event, so uh, original uh, or uh, um, let's say um, a progenitor cell took up a bacterium that became later on in evolution, the chloroplast. So during this evolutionary time, most of the genes of this genome became transferred into the nucleus where they are either gaining a new function or they are targeted back into the organelle. So this was then also resulting in um, a fixed endosymbiosis so that the, that basically the host cell had the chloroplast and the chloroplast was not was not able to live without the nucleus of the host cell. So um, there are certain genes that remained located in this genome in the plant, and these genes are um, important genes for photosynthesis, ribosomes, um, polymerases. So these genes have not yet been transferred to the nucleus and probably will also remain in the genome for longer. We can dive into the specifics of your research now. So. Um, you were able to show that through horizontal gene transfer, two sexually incompatible grafted plants can exchange the entire genome of a chloroplast. Can you explain the process by which you were able to do this? So this is not specifically my topic, but it's the topic of the lab I'm working in. So I was not on this uh, research project where the, where the nucleus transferred between sexually incompatible species. So in the study that I performed, we used uh, the same species, but that was just individual plants that exchanged the genome. The, um, the mechanism in which the, the nucleus is exchanged is not yet known and is something that uh, has still to be highlighted in the, in the future experiments. Got it. Um, so, so then can you um, elaborate on what specifically you were able to show or demonstrate? So what we were able to show is that uh, that um, was in the connecting area of these two plants, the cell walls that are actually rigid and should not allow the passage of molecules um, exceeding a certain uh, molecular weight, uh, become porous. So there's uh, holes of up to one to two micron uh, diameters that allow the passage of uh, cytoplasmic material. So in our case, we observed that um, organelles like plastids uh, that are usually in tobacco about five to six microns in size become very small and uh, and mobile and they can pass uh, through these pores from one cell to the other and so what we were able to see, show is that these organelles can uh, so that we could observe in real time um, the transfer of an organelle from one cell to the other so i heard that you were able to actually film this um, exchange uh, how are you able to do that? So we used a confocal microscopy so that we uh, used a, um, you know, how to say that we used a certain type of 
fluorescence microscopy, light microscopy to observe um, inside of a graft junction um, the transfer of the cells. Why is this exchange beneficial? Is it a response to something? So there, there's um, we have to, we have to think about the situation in 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 which that happens. So there's of course a horticultural uh, advantage of this. So we can basically transfer genomes from from plastids from one species to the other and create an, a new subspecies that might be beneficial um, for uh, for horticultural reasons. We have observed that it seems to be also related to stress conditions or starvation conditions. So that means that the plant seems to um, seems to um, find out that there is a problem with uh, with the nutrient supply and the water supply. There's a problem with plastids. And so it might be that it takes just plastids from the neighboring cell to compensate for, for this loss. And this kind of like is a little bit in parallel to the mammalian field or um, or how to say more like, I mean, there's cases in, uh, in human cells where mitochondria are exchanged between neighboring cells. And this can be caused either by uh, a stroke, for instance, that mitochondria from neighboring cells are taken up to replace dysfunctional mitochondria. We also have examples from cancer cells that restore their growth by exchanging of dysfunctional organelles with functional organelles. You, you mentioned how you were able to create um, a new species of plant um, you, using this exchange. Uh, I, I read about that a little, a little bit um, before. So can you sort of expand on how you're able to do that? So as I, as I said before, so this is not definitely, the, so this is not the study that I, that I was uh, doing in the past years, it is, but it has been done in the same laboratory. So what is what's performed is basically the same experiment, but instead of uh, selecting for a transfer of organelle, um, it was selected for the transfer of the whole nucleus. So basically the experimental setup is, is, is very similar or identical. But what we used is selection markers for antibiotics, and these can be encoded in the nuclear genome or in the plastic genome. So in case of a nuclear genome selection, um, the lab of Bock was able to uh, regenerate a plant that is combining genomes from both uh, graft partners. And these plants were not identical to the parent plants. So that means that based on the genome, as well as based on their anatomy and morphology, they uh, represent a new species. That concludes this episode of Socratic Studios. Huge thanks to Dr. Hurdle for agreeing to be on the podcast. And huge thanks to you for listening. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss another video. And we'll catch you next time.